Hello everyone. In a previous video, I started talking about the topic of twin flames, the twin flame connection. And in this part two, I'm going to continue that conversation. In the first video, I gave some general characteristics of the twin flame connection and the difference between a twin flame and a soulmate. That was the first video. I'll leave a link to that video if you didn't see it and you'd like to go back. So part two of the Twin Flame Connection series goes into a little bit more advice. <laughs> I did give some tips and advice in the first video, but I'm going a little deeper in this video. Um, tips, advice, uh, some general counsel <laughs> that I want to give you in relation to the Twin Flame Connection. I got a lot of messages after that first video. So if you have any further uh, questions or any more feedback about the Twin Flame Connection after you watch the second video, then shoot me an email. I'm always available. All right, so let's go to some general advice on the Twin Flame Connection, how to live through a Twin Flame Connection or how to live with a Twin Flame Connection. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the idea that the Twin Flame Connection repels any level of attachment and that's the most important thing that I want to talk about in this video is the fact that this type of connection cannot have attachment it literally repels the energy of attachment so if you are trying to live your twin flame connection kind of in a traditional way there's still a lot of attachment involved with current romantic relationships and in our collective consciousness now it just won't work in a twin flame connection. You will literally repel each other if you try to grasp at each other. Now, I also wanted to, before I forget, I wanted to say that these tips and this advice that I'm giving you in this video, it doesn't just apply to twin flame relationships. I uh, say these things and I talk about these things in relation to every single type of relationship. This is really, this advice I'm giving you is about how to live in conscious relationship in this new era. But specifically, within the Twin Flame Connection, this advice that I'm giving you, it becomes much more important because as I specified in the first video, the intensity of the Twin Flame Connection is so, so deep. It is so intense that living these tips that I'm giving you now become really important <laughs> when living with a twin flame connection. Okay, so continuing on, sorry for that side <laughs> track there. Um, the twin flame connection repels attachment. So you cannot live with any form of attachment in this relationship or this connection. Now, how do you get rid of attachment? <laughs> how do you live love without attachment? And the first thing I would like to say about that, I actually want to quote uh, Ram Das, spiritual teacher Ram Das. He has a beautiful article called The Idea of a Soulmate. And in it, I'm going to quote a little, a little piece of the text because I think it, it will help you kind of open your hands and release any form of grip or any form of attachment you have. And the first way of doing that is releasing the label of soulmate, releasing the label of twin flame. So here's the, here I have my iPad here so I can read better. Here's the, the uh, excerpt from Ram Dass's article. Behind all of it is the one. And all, that is all there is. All of us here are one in drag, appearing to be many. So we are all soulmate. There is only one of it. It's not mate because it's not even two. <laughs> it's only one. There's only one of us. So what you're really doing is constantly marrying yourself at the deepest level of God marrying God. Now you come down into soul. I love that excerpt because what it's showing, it's helping us release our grip on this. On, on, on the idea of a relationship because the deepest foundational truth of the universe is oneness. We are all one. So like Ram Dass says, there isn't two of us. <laughs> now, how do we apply this idea of oneness in our relationships? Because in this 3D reality, we're still perceiving each other as being individuals. So how do I release my attachment to someone that I have just labeled my twin flame? Now, I want you to notice why this excerpt is so important. 
Because as soon as you release your grip on this label of twin flame, you begin to give yourself a little bit more space. Now, when you say, let's just say, you know, let's use the label twin flame or let's use the label soulmate and see what happens after we label <laughs> twin flame, soulmate, uh, you're my partner. As soon as we create a label, we're putting someone on a pedestal and pretty soon, if we're not conscious, pretty soon that person that we've just put on a pedestal, the mental movies will go something like this. I can't live without you. You are the love of my life. Only you can make me happy. Do you see? Our minds, our egos then begin to create an identity around the person that we've just put on a pedestal. Buddhists call that the beginning level of an attachment as a preference. You exhibit a preference, and then as soon as you exhibit a preference from there to an attachment is a very short <laughs> road. So that's why I like this idea of being light. Twin flame connections require lightness of being. There's nothing to grasp onto. And this is a good way to start by letting go of even the label twin flame or even the label soulmate. You can still love that person deeply. So by letting go of labels, it's not that you're not loving that person. You are, you're loving them, but you're loving them without any conditions, without requiring them to do anything, without putting anyone on a pedestal. So, so that, that'll give you a little bit of help on how to release control, let go of attachment, because you cannot live a twin flame connection with any form of attachment. It will literally repel itself from the connection. No attachment in twin flames. <laughs> so that's the, that's the first piece of advice. The second piece of advice, it kind of, this is all talking about the same thing really, but the second piece of advice in um, kind of helping you out with this lightness of being. I keep receiving the word lightness, so I'm gonna repeat it again. The twin flame connection requires lightness of being. That goes hand in hand with no attachment, right? So the second um, piece of advice is that everything is always working out. <laughs> and what do I mean by this? I mean that if your twin flame is right next to you, everything is working out. If your twin flame is not next to you, everything is working out. <laughs> Do you see the level of lightness that's necessary to live in this connection? Do you see the level of non-attachment, right? Everything is always working out because you are whole, you are a whole being, and that means that you require nothing from the outside, and you live with openness. You, you live this connection with pure love and openness, so everything is always working out. There is no attachment whatsoever. So if I'm with my twin flame, that's wonderful. And I, if I'm not with my twin flame, that's wonderful too. <laughs> I, I know that, that I'm, I'm being a bit um, non-dramatic. I'm trying to take all of the drama out of the twin flame connection because there can be a lot of drama and it always has to do with a level of attachment. So the more attached you are, the more drama there will be in the connection. So there's the second part. Everything is always working out. <laughs> now the third piece of advice is to focus on self. Focus on your inner transformation. Because like I said in the first video, the twin flame connection is the most intense mirror of yourself that you will find in this 3D reality. So here's what it looks like when the person focuses on the twin flame instead of on self. So the person will say, you know, my twin flame did this to me. I don't understand what he's thinking. Like, is he crazy? He just pulled away from me and walked out the door. Do you see? <laughs> I'm just giving you a little, a little uh, tidbit of what happens when we focus on the other instead of focusing on the mirror. So what a twin flame connection is constantly asking you is not to focus on what the other person supposedly did to you, but to focus on the mirror, what that action caused in you. Focus on self, focus on your inner transformation, focus on releasing attachment, on becoming more and more whole. Okay, so there's, there's the other, <laughs> there's another one, that, that was the third one. Focus on inner transformation. And the last piece of advice I wanted to give, and it's the most beautiful one, and I hope that you can carry this in your heart as you live with your twin flame connection. 
The most important thing that you can ever tell your twin flame is not, I love you. <laughs> uh, love is a given in a twin flame connection. It is just a given. It's the foundation of the connection. The love between two twin flames is very deep and it's very old. It comes from multiple lifetimes together. So love is a given. The most important thing that you can ever tell your twin flame is you are free. <laughs> And again, this could apply to any romantic relationship, to any conscious relationship. Always, always say you are free. Now love and freedom, they're pretty much connected. <laughs> you can't have one without the other. But I'm emphasizing this freedom just so we can keep our attention on, again, I'm getting the word lightness. Right? So opening our hands, no attachment, lightness of being, love and freedom. And yes, everything is always working out. <laughs> now, there are some spiritual teachers, and I'm sure if you go to other literature and you watch other videos, there will be teachers that will say that if you incarnate with a twin flame, it is inevitable that you end up together. I have heard this over and over again. And I see this a little differently. And because my work is so deeply in the idea of non-attachment, when I hear or I read a teacher saying that, you know, it's just inevitable that you end up with that person, uh, I kind of get the sensation that that's really only inviting a person to become more attached, right? Because if I read somewhere, oh, you're just inevitably going to end up with that person, I have a reason to attach myself to that notion, right? So I see things a little differently. I go back to what I said a little while ago. Things are always working out. If this person is your twin flame, love them deeply in freedom. If you end up together, that's wonderful. And if you don't end up together, that's wonderful too. <laughs> okay, I'm done with twin flames for now. If you have any more questions about twin flames or about any other topic, please email me at info at christina-lopes.com and check out my other videos. I've got a lot of videos going on here in my YouTube channel in both Portuguese and English. So check out my other videos, uh, like my Facebook page if you enjoy my work, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this series on Twin Flames and I will see you next week. Thank you everyone.